Hebrews chapter 11 is known as the chapter of faith. Verse number 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse number 6 it says, But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It's not enough to believe that God exists. You've got to believe on him. You've got to put your faith and trust in him and his finished works. And he will reward you in doing so. But what I want to read is verse number 8. The Bible says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out to a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Look at verse 16. But now they desire a better country, that is, in heavenly Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, we certainly thank you for the good singing. We thank you for the good testimonies. We thank you for being a good God. Now, Father, I pray you would continue to arrange the atmosphere around here tonight. We pray that you'd be highly exalted and glorified and magnified. And Father, we certainly pray you'd speak to our hearts tonight. Lord, I pray that when you speak, we would not be hearers only of the Word of God, but we would also be faithful doers of the Word of God. Father, you know the need of everyone here tonight. Maybe somebody needs to be encouraged tonight. Maybe somebody needs to be edified tonight. Maybe somebody needs to be enlightened tonight to their spiritual condition. And Father, we certainly pray if there's somebody here tonight, lost, unsaved, never known the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, I pray tonight that, Lord, the precious love of God would flood their soul, help them to see how much you care for them, and I pray that today would be the day of their salvation. Father, we pray if there's somebody here tonight saved, but they're not where they should be with you. I pray that, Lord, in your long suffering that, Lord, you'd speak to them, and, God, we'd see them make things right with the Lord. I pray for that one that's in the valley, that, Lord, they'd find the lily of their valley. I pray for that one on the mountaintop, that, Lord, you'd throw another log on the fire of their heart and help them to continue to shine and blaze for you. Lord, wherever anybody else is, I pray you do a work in their hearts. Uh, now, Father, use this unworthy vessel. Help these thy people. God bless those that are working with the teens on the other side of the building. And God, just get glory to your glorious name and will not fail to bow these unworthy heads uh, and thank you for what you've done. Have your will and way now, Father, for it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen. In these verses, uh, we find that Abraham uh, listens to the call of God. Uh, in verse number 8, it says, By faith Abraham, when he was called... Uh, to go out to a place which he should after uh, receive for an inheritance, obeyed. Uh, he was faithful to obey the call of God. Uh, my dear friends, uh, uh, God calls uh, sinners to repentance. Uh, God calls saints to service. Uh, one of these days, he's going to call the children of God home. Hallelujah. Uh, but listen, if you're here tonight uh, and you're not saved and God begins speaking to your heart, let you know you need to be saved, uh, you need to do like Abraham, just obey God and get saved tonight. Uh, uh, you say, preacher, how do I get saved? In a little while, we're going to have an invitation, invite you to come to God. Uh, we'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved tonight. Uh, 
Maybe you're here and you're saved. Uh, you know you're saved. Uh, uh, but God begins speaking to your heart about doing something for him. Uh, friend, the happiest you'll ever be is doing something for the Lord. Uh, hey, just obey him. Do what God says. Uh, maybe uh, 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 tonight uh, 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 he speaks something about a specific call. Uh, maybe just a general call. Tells you you need to be more faithful. Whatever he says, uh, just do it. Uh, friend, one of these days when he calls us home, you'll not be ashamed. Uh, when he calls you because you was faithful uh, to do what he said. We see Abraham listen to the call. Uh, then Abraham left all that he'd ever known. Uh, look again in verse number 8. Uh, he said, and he went out not knowing whither he went. He left all he'd ever known. Can I say it's one thing to serve God uh, 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 in a familiar surrounding, but uh, Abraham left not even knowing where he was headed. Mm. He just followed God. Can I say one step at a time? Well, just follow Jesus. It'll be all right. Uh, but then notice, uh, he looked for a city. Look at verse number 10. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, 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 we find that Abraham was a stranger and a pilgrim uh, in a land not uh, 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 familiar to him, but he's looking for a city uh, whose builder and maker is God. Can I say this? Uh, a stranger is away from home. Uh, a pilgrim is headed to home. Uh, it'd be good then if you get this down in the gateway into your soul. Uh, 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 we are in this world, but we are not of this world. If you're saved tonight, uh, 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 we're not at home, uh, but we're headed home. Uh, and you ought to set your sights uh, on that uh, homeland that is just over the horizon. Uh, I believe the Lord's coming back for His church. I believe He's coming back soon. Uh, hey, if you look what's going on in this world, everything's uh, lined it up. Uh, it's almost, Brother Bob, to the point where we can see the lights of that city just over the horizon. Uh, he's looking for a city. Uh, uh, can I say the third Saturday night of March in 1974, uh, I, I got born again. Hallelujah. God came to where I was, uh, uh, convicted me of my sin, and I got saved that night. Uh, and I blessed the Lord for it. Uh, can I say, uh, for those 47 years, Brother Brian, and I've been looking for the same city that Abraham was looking for. Uh, I've been looking for that place uh, that he's going to prepare. Uh, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, if you believe in God, believe also in me. Uh, in my Father's house are many mansions. Uh, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. Uh, and if I go to prepare a place for you, uh, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Uh, hey, uh, I, I got my name right next to that. Uh, he went to prepare a place for me. Uh, hey, I've got a mansion over in glory. Uh, got my name on it. Uh, and I'm looking to move in any day. Uh, uh, I want to preach with a little bit of God's help tonight on I'm going home. I'm a going home. Now, I'm not talking about 8731 Heritage Drive. I'm talking about Glory Land Hallelujah Boulevard. Are you listening? Uh, 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 you say, preacher, uh, 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 where is uh, uh, your home? Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, my home uh, is in a place uh, that is peaceful. Uh, my home is in a place where there is no more sin, uh, where there is no more sickness, uh, where there is no more sorrow, uh, there is no more pain, uh, there is no more death, uh, there is no more heartache, uh, there is no more heartbreak. Uh, uh, in my homeland, uh, a funeral director's been put out of business. Uh, in my home homeland. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, it's a place uh, where every house is a mansion. Uh, uh, it's a place uh, where it hasn't even entered into the heart of man what God uh, hath gone to prepare for them that he loves. Uh, are you listening? Uh, it's a place uh, where the rivers are crystal clear. Uh, it's a place, uh, uh, my dear friends, where the sun, S-O-N, is always shining. Uh, and it's the light of the city. Uh, uh, can I say something about my home? land. Uh, uh, it's a place where the streets are purest gold. Uh, where the walls are jasper. Uh, where the foundation of the city uh, is made up of precious gems and jewels. Uh, hey, 
day the meadows are clothed uh, with lilies uh, because he's the lily of the valley. Uh, The streets are lined with roses uh, because he's the rose of Sharon. Uh, Hey, uh, uh, what is the theme song of your homeland? Uh, I don't know. It might be something like Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound uh, that saved a wretch like me. Uh, I once was blind, uh, but now I see. Uh, Hallelujah for my homeland. Uh, uh, You say, what is the motto of your homeland? Uh, We got it uh, hanging up back there. Uh, Worthy is the Lamb uh, that was slain to receive power uh, and riches uh, and honor. Uh, Hey, uh, you say, what is the production of your homeland? Uh, It is worship. Uh, It is worship. Uh, It is worship. Uh, Hey, uh, everybody in the streets are singing uh, glory to his name. Uh, Everybody on the hillside is singing uh, praise the Lord. Uh, Hey, uh, uh, everyone around the throne is singing saved, uh, saved, uh, saved uh, by the crucified one. Uh, uh, what is going on in what in heaven? Uh, hey, there's a lot of shouting, a uh, lot of singing, a uh, lot of praising God. Uh, hey, I got news for you, friend. Uh, this is the most quiet world you're ever going to be in. Uh, you die and go to hell. Uh, there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Uh, you go to heaven. Uh, it's shouting time and glory. Uh, hey, it's on like Donkey Kong. Uh, folks are having themselves a spell because uh, Jesus is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, you say, preacher, what is the recreation uh, of your homeland? Uh, it is family reunions. Uh, where the circle will not be broken. Uh, It's where moms and dads, mothers and daughters, uh, fathers and sons, uh, grandpas and grandmas, uh, and everyone is reunited uh, around the throne of God and praising God for His marvelous grace. Uh, 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 You say, what else goes on over there? Uh, Well, the street noise uh, is children's laughter. I'm not talking about like these precious ones we got here. I'm talking about the ones that were aborted in the womb. Uh, uh, Listen, uh, God's picked up all the pieces uh, and He's put them back together uh, and they're running around the streets of glory uh, uh, laughing and enjoying life. Uh, They may have been one wanted here, uh, but they've got a place over yonder. Uh, I bless the Lord. Uh, uh, What else is going on? Well, there's angels rejoicing, uh, crying, Holy, holy, holy. Uh, uh, What is the name of your homeland? Uh, uh, some call it heaven uh, some call it glory uh, but to save the child of God the redeemed call it home hallelujah I'm going home uh, you say preacher why are you going I'm glad you asked because there's something worth going for there's something worth going for listen years ago brother Ray may remember this Miss Pam may remember this. When I first became their pastor, the church down there, Victory, couldn't afford to pay very much. They'd had a lot of problems. A lot of people left. And then God sent this crazy guy down there, and a lot of people didn't want to come back. Uh, But I was having a work a job, sometimes two jobs, jobs on the side, Brother John, plus pastor of that church, just try to make ends meet. Uh, most know the story. Brother Clint, before I took that church, I was working in a corporate America, making good money. God called me to take that church. We didn't look back. We took that church. Miss Annette was just wondering, have you lost your mind or you know the will of God? She still asks that same question. You know, it's only been about 25 years, huh? But listen, we took that church and I was doing all kinds of work, but I, I was working for my stepfather. He had a lighting business. He had a lot of companies under contract. And as back when they come out with, uh, they was taking the big fluorescent tubes out, putting them little skinny ones in, they was retrofitting all these light fixtures, and the government was giving rebates to companies that did that. And uh, 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 he had a bunch of companies under contract that would let me go to work for him. And I'll never forget, Brother Mike, uh, 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 we was doing a Pepsi plant in Louisville. Yes, I said Louisville. Huh? And we was down there in Louisville doing this, working on this Pepsi plant. And uh, we were up about 75 feet up in the air, 
And the light fixtures, Miss Marcy, were made out of cast iron. That's how old this place was. When I'd go up there and get to work and, and come down, it didn't look like I was fixing lights. It looked like I was cleaning, cleaning the chimneys. I mean, it was filthy. It was a nasty job. And uh, because we were there, we worked an odd shift. We'd start about you know midnight, 1 in the morning. We'd work till about 11 or noon and, and take off and... And it was kind of an odd shift, and we stayed in hotel rooms down there. And Miss Annette had just had Miss Sydney. Miss Sydney was just weeks old. And it was in a, a situation where I left out Sunday night after church. We were going to church in Owenton. We lived here in Florence. It was 50 something miles one way. And I left out Sunday night after church, went to Louisville, and I'd work all week. I'd leave. Uh, 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 Louisville to come and preach Wednesday night and went back down there in Louisville. Miss Annette wasn't even healed up to be able to travel. She couldn't even come to church that Wednesday night. Uh, and uh, 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 I wouldn't get off work till Saturday morning. And I'll never forget, I was talking to Miss Annette on the phone. She said, little Christian walking around, he found a, a picture of me and Miss Annette on the coffee table, and he's just walking around carrying it. Boy, to eat my heart out. Uh, he's looking for Daddy. Where's Daddy at? He's got his little pacifier walking around that picture. Uh, little Miss Sydney, uh, just uh, a newborn, and I'm down there working, uh, and I got dirt and grime. I mean, I'm used to wearing a shirt and tie, brother, and I'm, I'm down there, got dirt and grime all over me, working, and, and I'm never forget uh, how the boss man told us as we clocked in that late Friday night, uh, early Saturday morning, he said, look, uh, when we get off shift, uh, 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 we're all going to go back to the hotel, get cleaned up, take a shower, lay down, take a nap, and then we'll go to the house. Uh, I said, listen, you hear me, uh, and you hear me well. Uh, uh, when it comes quitting time, uh, I'm going to clock out. Uh, I'm going to hop in that explorer that we had at the time. Uh, I'm going to head to Florence, Kentucky. Uh, I'm not even going to slow down if there's blue lights behind me uh, until I pull into 5849 Green Drive uh, and I, uh, I get home. Uh, they said, Doug, we've worked hard all week. Uh, you're going to be dirty and filthy. Uh, uh, you need to go rest and get cleaned up. Uh, I said, maybe you didn't hear me. Uh, uh, you hear me and hear me well. Uh, uh, when it's quitting time, I'm headed to the house. Uh, you say, why? Uh, I, I, there was something worth going home for. Uh, I'll never forget, I pulled her up in the driveway, barely threw it in park. Uh, didn't even close the door when I jumped out of the vehicle. Uh, uh, there's Jordan and Christian looking out the screen door. Uh, uh, they was excited Daddy was home. Uh, I flung open that door and hugged them boys up. Uh, I went over my little baby dolls uh, laying on the couch with pillows all around her uh, and I kissed her uh, but I wasn't satisfied uh, until my eyes uh, I beheld the one that was the object of my affection. Uh, my darling bride. Uh, and I went to the house and found Mama uh, and hugged her and kissed her. Uh, you say, what are you saying, preacher? When Jesus calls me friend, I'm not going somewhere to get cleaned up. I'm not going somewhere to lay down. Hey, when he calls me, I'm going to glory. And listen, I'm not looking for streets of gold. I'm not looking for a mansion. I'm not looking for angels. I'm not even looking for loved ones. I'm not going to be satisfied till I can bow at his feet and worship him. Him, uh, the very one who's the eye of my affection uh, and thank him and praise him uh, why you going cause there's something worth going home for uh, and his name is Jesus whoa listen hallelujah I'm going to see him and then after we've been there for a million years I'll get to see my family those that I've been related to. I got a white-haired grandpa over there who preached me out of hell. 
I get to go hug him uh, and thank him for staying true to this book, uh, for not compromising, uh, uh, for not allowing the crowd to come in uh, and not be true to the things of God. Uh, I've got my grandma over there uh, who bought me my first Bible. Uh, I can't wait to see her. Uh, i got a mama over there. Uh, I can't wait to see her again. Uh, listen, i got other loved ones over there. Uh, but then i got family that I've served God with, uh, uh, the family of God. Uh, those have been faithful uh, uh, to worship with uh, and be around uh, and win people to God with uh, and enjoy good services with. Uh, Brother Bob, uh, heaven's going to be wonderful because of Jesus, uh, but also because of folks like you uh, uh, that we've been able to just serve God with. Uh, Brother Ray, we've been down the road. Uh, isn't it going to be wonderful uh, when we get over there uh, and after we've got to pay attention to the Lord for a little while? Uh, uh, somewhere over there in the corner, glory, uh, we'll get to singing uh, God Still Saves Old Sinners or something uh, and have a time because uh, of the good grace of God. Uh, hey, I'll tell you, there's something worth going home for. Uh, I'm thinking about those who've helped to win. Listen, I'm not much, I know that. But every now and then God reaches in His tool bag and pulls me out and uses me to touch somebody's life and they get in the family of God. Boy, it's going to be worth seeing them over there. Uh, it's going to be worth seeing them over there. It's going to be worth seeing friends over there. I'm telling you, man, there's something worth going home for. You say, preacher, how do you get there? Well, it's a prepared place for prepared people see the only way to get over there you've got to be a regenerated sinner see we're all born in sin we're all sinners by birth but you've got to be a regenerated sinner say how do you do that well first of all there's only three ways to get into a family you're born into a family you're adopted into a family or you marry into a family well, the only way to get there, you've got to be born again. One well, of the most religious men in the Bible came to Jesus by night and asked him well, uh, uh, what he must do to inherit eternal life. And Jesus said, ye must be born again. Religion won't save you. Baptism won't save you. Being a good moral person won't save you. Coming to church won't save you. Uh, putting an offering in the plate won't save you. The only thing that will save you is Jesus. Uh, when you realize you're lost uh, and you come and repent and ask Him to save you, He said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, uh, if you believe in the Lord and put your faith in Him and repent, He'll save you. you got to get born again. He'll change your life. But there's an amazing thing that happens when you get born again. Romans chapter 8 tells us we get adopted into the family of God. And hallelujah. Revelation 19 tells us we're going to the marriage supper of the Lamb. The Lamb's bride has made herself ready. What a blessing. One of these days we're going to get married. We're getting all three. Uh, we're getting born into, adopted, and we'll get married into the family of God. What a blessing, huh? Listen, how do you get there? Well, you get there by being in the family. And then you get there by flight. The only way to get there is through the Glory Land Express. Uh, in a moment, in a twinkling eye, one of these days, the trumpet's going to sound and the bride's going out of here. But if you die before then, the Bible says to be absent from the bodies, be present with the Lord. Uh, God hath removed the sting of death for his people. You go to sleep in this land and wake up in glory, huh? You're going by flight. I believe we're going in a few days, huh? Listen, I thought about this. Even a prodigal can find his way home. Hmm? Huh? We have that great illustration in John 15 where that prodigal son went to a far country, spent all he had on righteous living. He went out thinking he owned the world. Ended up in a hog pen. Worst place you can ever find a Jewish boy is in a hog pen. But he came to himself, Brother Matt. Huh? Came to himself, Miss Noreen. He didn't stay in the hog pen. He said, even the servants of my father's house got better than this. He said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to my father, tell him I'm no more worthy to be his son. He said, uh, I, I, I just make me one of your hired servants. Uh, he got up and headed down that same path he left on. Brother Phil, he got there. I believe he got around the last bend. His father sat on the porch looking. He said, that looks like my boy. And the father ran and fell on him 
and kissed him and kissed him. And he's trying to apologize. He's trying to tell his dad, I'm no longer worthy to be your son. The father just kissed him and kissed him, looked at the servant and said, Hey, bring forth the best robe. Bring forth a ring. Put on his finger, shoes on his feet. My boy that once was lost, he's found. What a blessing, huh? So what happened there? The father forgave him. Why? Because that was the father's son. Hmm? You see, even a prodigal can find his way home. I'm reminded of a story. A young man had got on a train back when people traveled by train. And while he's sitting there, a preacher got on the train. And the preacher went and sat down next to him. And as the train takes off, the preacher noticed the boy looked a little troubled. Brother Brian, the preacher, looked at him and said, Son, he said, I'm a preacher. Is there anything I can help you with? And that boy begins to tell him. He said, Preacher, he said, I was a terrible young man. He said, I was a teenager and I was full of vigor and venom. Thought I knew more than my parents, knew better than my parents. And I was out involved in things I shouldn't be involved in. My parents were trying to warn me. They was trying to help me. They was trying to encourage me. But I just got into it with him all the time. I knew better than him. And he said, Preacher, the last time I was home, my father and I came to blows, and I punched my, my daddy in the face. He said, I left out. I was going to make something of myself. He said, I traveled, and I was hoboing here and there. He said, my life had no meaning. But he said this, Brother Donald. He said, but two weeks ago, I ended up in a little rescue mission. I went for a bowl of soup, and there was a preacher preaching. And he got to preaching about the love of Jesus Christ. He said, Preacher, that night I got born again. He said, I wrote my mom and daddy a letter, and I apologized to them. I thought, I'm so sorry. He said, Preacher, I told them I'd be on this train tonight. He said, Preacher, I told them that you see this train runs right behind the old home instead. And I told him if it'd be okay for me to come home, just put a yellow ribbon in the old oak tree behind the house, and I know it'll be all right. And then, if not, I'd understand. He said, Preacher, we're coming up on the old, old place now. He said, I can't bear to look. Preacher, can you look and see if there's a ribbon out there in that oak tree? Well, the preacher looked out the window. He sat back and had a big smile on his face. He said, son, that oak tree's in full bloom. Uh, he said, there's ribbons hanging all over it. Uh, and there's a white-haired mom and daddy out there with a bed sheet just waving it, uh, saying, welcome home, son. Uh, welcome home, son. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, we got a heavenly father uh, who's got the bed sheet out uh, waving for prodigals. Uh, welcome home. Uh, welcome home. Uh, Hey, when a prodigal comes home, uh, the church ought to roll out the red carpet. Uh, we ought to put our arms around them. Uh, we ought to bless the Lord. Uh, that one come home. Hallelujah. Huh? I'm glad even a prodigal can find his way home. Can I say this? Even on earth, we have home on earth. It's called the church. It's a place where we can come amongst our kind and be ourselves. You know, out there in the world, they don't think too much of us. They call us all kinds of names. And then they'll justify their life by saying we're a bunch of hypocrites. And they're trying to shut us down. They don't want to hear about it, about the old story anymore about how Jesus saves us. Uh, they want us to be tolerant of everything that they're, they're doing out there in sin, but they're not tolerant of the message we have to preach. But I want to tell you something. Home is a sacred refuge in this world. It's the church where we can come. We can still worship the Lord and exalt Him, sing songs of praise unto Him, enjoy one another's company and fellowship, uh, and certainly center our thoughts and our uh, minds upon the Bible. Thankful for the church. Can I say this? If you were saved, you ought to feel at home at church. Hmm? But listen, realtors all across this country lie to people. They put signs in yards saying home for sale. Listen, you can have a house. That don't mean you got a home. I'm reminded over there in Matthew chapter 7. I won't turn there. 
But Jesus said, beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. And Jesus talks about a crowd that's going to come to him on the judgment day. And they're going to say, did we not preach in your name and teach in your name? Did we not do many wonderful works in your name? Did we not do this in your name and do that in your name? And he says this, depart from me, ye that worked iniquity. I never knew you. See, there's a lot of folks that have all the outward shell that they belong to God. The Bible calls them having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Brother Clint, there's a lot of people dress up, go to church on Sunday. That don't mean they know Jesus. You can have a house. That don't mean you have a home. Jesus makes the difference. And then let me say this lastly. Unfortunately, there are some who are homeless. I'm talking not only physically, but spiritually. In Revelation chapter number 20, the Bible says this in verse 11, And I saw a great throne, great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And some of the saddest words in the Bible. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And out of those things which were written in the books, uh, and they were judged out of those things which were written uh, in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and the death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire you see eternity only has two places the homeland I've been trying to preach about heaven and a terrible place created for the devil and his angels, supernatural beings that it was created to inflict punishment on. Those who reject Jesus Christ, the only other place that they can spend eternity is that place called the lake of fire. You see, they're homeless. No place was found for them. Hmm? I'm reminded, back years ago down in Owenton, We had a little girl that would sit on the right side of the church, sit in the front row. This little girl would come, and really, she she was 15, but she had the mind of about a six-year-old. And she would come, and most of the time, she was dirty. Most of the time, her clothes didn't match. Most of the time, her shoes were just ragged. One of the families in that church would swing by a trailer park and pick her up every service. And I'll never forget if I'd done like I did tonight, ask if anybody had a song. Every now and then, she'd raise her hand. And she'd stand, and she'd open up the hymn book and sing a song that she'd read the words that meant something to her, but she didn't know how the tune went, and she was off tune anyway. But she sang it. And I'll never forget one night... Hadn't been there long. Brother Phil, I asked if anybody had a testimony. And she raised her hand. And she said, I want to thank God for this church. And I want to thank God for my clothes. And I want to thank God for the family that brings me to church. That's about all she said, and she sat down. I get to looking at her and her clothes were filthy didn't match all tattered and she's thanking God for her clothes brother James now keep in mind I come from corporate America I'm sitting there in a $600 suit I had on a $300 pair of shoes brother Mike I had a tie on I'd pay 70 bucks for I didn't thank God for my clothes I cried all the way home told Miss Annette, I said, you got more clothes than you're wearing three lifetimes. We're going to get some clothes for that little girl. I was booked to preach somewhere that week, and I told that story. I had folks bring me money to give that little girl. So that next weekend we went, we opened the back end of that Explorer, and we had a couple big old garbage bags full of clothes. 
and you you would not have believed the expression I love. She was absolutely jumping and clapping her hands for joy. But all them new clothes. And then little Rhonda was her name. Not that Rhonda. We gave the family that brought her to church the money and said, take her and get her whatever she wants. The next week, the family come and told us what she spent the money on. She bought a pair of pantyhose because she'd never owned any. And she wanted to go to the beauty shop and get her hair done at the beauty shop. Well, I told that about Miss Rhonda because a couple weeks after that, we're standing like we do around here. Men stand out there. Women sit in the pews and talk before church. And Miss Rhonda came, and she brought a little friend with her. And a little friend walked in, and a little friend was 13 at the time. And her friend walked in. She shook hands with all the men, walked in, and I'm about halfway right about here. And she looked at me. She said, are you the preacher? I said, yes, ma'am. She shook my hand. She says, my name's Beth. I said, my name's Brother Doug. Good to have you, Beth. Well, it struck me. Most teenagers, the last thing they want to do is shake hands with a the preacher. They want to go hide somewhere. She shook hands, looked every man in the eye, shook hands with them, come shook my hand, sat down. After service, I said, Beth, it was sure good to have you in church. Wish you'd come back. She said, well, I enjoyed myself, and I will. True to her word, that was on a Wednesday night. She came back on Sunday for Sunday school. It was there Sunday morning worship. Came back Sunday night. Came back the following Wednesday night. Came back the next Sunday morning, Sunday night. And, and, and then came Wednesday. She came to that. And then Thursday came. Thursday, we had a little jubilee meeting. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Some of you from Orchard Street may rem remember it. It was the first little jubilee we had down there. We had Larry Seals preaching. A lot of y'all came. Larry and Tammy came and sang on that Saturday night. Thursday night, Miss Beth's not there. Friday night, Miss Beth's not there. Saturday night, all the Orchard Street gang came down. We had folding chairs out. It was packed. The Lord started moving in the song service. I mean, Brother Ray opened up with prayer bells in heaven, and it went to heaven from there. The well, next thing I know, the singers are singing. God's are moving. And here comes little Beth, she hits the altar, and she gets gloriously born again. Wonderful. Well, let me tell you the rest of the story. The family that brought her to church took her home after service and then stopped back by the church after they dropped her off. And they came in, they told me the story, they said, Preacher, we think you need to know this. They brought me a bottle of pills that Beth had in her purse. And Brother James, she had all intentions that night of going home, taking those pills, and ending her life. That little girl that was so bold and so confident that would shake the hand with the preacher, that would shake hands with men, that was just a, a, a very confident in everything. What we did not know is that she was abused by her mother's many boyfriends and anybody else in the trailer park. She was abused in ways we can't talk about in mixed company. And that little girl decided she'd had enough, and she was going to end her life. But that day, a little knock at the door, and little simple-minded Rhonda Stopped by her trailer and said, Beth, are you my friend? She said, well, why do you know I'm your friend? See, Beth was Rhonda's friend because Rhonda got picked on at school and Beth was never going to let anything happen to Rhonda like what happened to her. So she looked out for Rhonda. And she says, well, if you're my friend, we've got meeting going on at church. Brother Larry Seals is a good preacher and he's a preacher and singers are coming tonight. Would you come to church with me and be my friend? Beth couldn't tell her no. And she came to church. And she met Jesus that night. A lost soul that had no hope found the greatest hope in Jesus Christ. There's so many that are homeless out there like little Beth. Just wait for somebody to come by. Say, will you come to church with me? Now listen. 
uh, through some contacts and agencies there, we got that little girl out of that home. And that little girl got to go move away and live with family where she wouldn't be in that kind of harm's way anymore. I said all that to say this. Over in London, the police officers are called Bobbies. There was a little boy got lost in Old Town London. And Old Town London had a big old church, and the big old church had a cross on it. And that little boy got turned around and couldn't find his way back home, and he stopped and grabbed one of them Bobbies, a police officer, and he was so upset he couldn't even tell the police officer his name, couldn't tell the police officer's address. And finally, the police officer got him settled down. The little boy said this, point me to the cross, and I can find my way home. All these homeless folks, all they got to do is see the cross, and they can find their way home. You might be here tonight and don't know the Lord. Jesus Christ took your sin to the cross of Calvary, paid your sin debt so you could have a home in glory. And all you got to do is put your faith and trust in Him tonight. Friend, I'm going home. Are you? And here's the question. Are you going to take anybody with you? Who do you know that you can just knock on their door? And invite? Boy, I was encouraged by those that invited friends this, this morning. It's a blessing. How many little Beths are out there waiting for you to come by? Little Rhonda didn't have all the faculties you got. She didn't know the Bible like you know the Bible. But she did care about Beth. And she invited her. You know what you need? You just need to get a burden and care about somebody. Enough to invite them. Say, Preacher, I've invited them. Invite them again. Invite them again. Tell them again. If you're here tonight and you don't know the Lord, we'd sure love to introduce you to you. I'm going home. Are you going home? You can. The price has already been paid. Uh, everything's already been set in order. All you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Let's all stand tonight. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Maybe you need to come and thank the Lord that he saved you. Maybe it's been a while since you told him you loved him. Maybe you're here tonight and you're away from him. Even a prodigal can find his way home. But maybe you're here tonight and you don't know the Lord. Friend, if you'll come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how you can be saved. But I'm glad I'm going home. If you're glad you're going home, you ought to let the Lord know. You're so thankful. While they're picking out a song, folks are praying. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, thank you for going and prepare a place for someone such as I. Now, Lord, I, 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 when I walked in here tonight, I had no idea I'd been preaching that thought. But, Lord, you did. Lord, you know, sometimes we need to be reminded we're in this world, but not of this world. Sometimes we need to be reminded that there is a place called heaven. And one of these days, all of our troubles will be over. But then, Lord, there may be somebody here tonight. Their troubles are so weighty, they think there's no way out. Help them to realize Jesus can save them out of all their troubles in this life and the life to come. Lord, I pray if there's somebody like that tonight, they'll just come and let us introduce them to Jesus. Now, Father, have your way in this invitation. Maybe somebody needs to go to someone and tell them they've been a blessing. Maybe somebody needs to go to someone and tell them they care about them, they're concerned for them. I don't know, Lord, but just help folks mind you just like Abraham did. Just obey. And Father, we'll thank you for what you do. Speak to hearts now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.